Hello everybody, Jazzy here, and welcome to something that I haven't done in a very long time, and that is a tour of the Endless server. And this is a dedicated community server that I run every month. This month, we've done things a little differently, and you'll see it throughout <laughs> this tour. We have quite a few mods going on this month. So we have been using, among other mods, two very prominent mods developed by the architect of the architect pack himself, and that is Mr. Kino. And we're using two mods of his. One is called Apparels Overload, and the other is called Heap of Foods mod. Now, I'm gonna try to refrain from explaining too much about the mod because they're just really, really comprehensive in and of themselves. They change a lot about the world. So if you see something that you don't recognize, it's very likely because of one of those mods. So I will explain a few of the builds in this tour, but if you're interested in the mods, then I'll link to the Steam pages for each of them. So there have been a couple of community builds, but I'm going to start with the community base build, which is around the portal. One thing that we usually have on each endless server is a private chest zone. And this is because we use a mod called Camp Security, which gives us the ability to lock structures so that other people don't have access to them. You can see this stuff belongs to Murado, this stuff belongs to Mahmut, and this stuff belongs to Monif. So everyone's got their own separate chest storage zone. It just makes it a little simpler keeping track of personal items separated from stuff that's shared with the entire community. Got a couple docks built, a couple of, a couple of the giant trees going on. These are kegs from the Heap of Foods mod, and these are preserve jars from the Heap of Foods mod. I'm going to talk a little more about those in a little bit, but just to give you a quick overview of everything going on here. A little farm zone. A little food storage up here. Let's zoom out. Let's see what we got going on. Yeah, this, this base has been contributed to by a number of different players, and I'm going to try to refrain from mentioning all of them because so many people contributed to these builds. Here's our kitchen over here. These honey deposit boxes are also part of the Heap of Foods mod, and they basically not only store any honey foods inside of them, but they also regenerate the spoilage over time, which is pretty nice. I designed most of this chest zone myself. And down here, we got a gecko pen. We've got a Warly kitchen. A couple banana bushes. There used to be a bunch of koalas in here. Some of them got moved over to my base, which I'll show you in a little bit. And now, I guess it's a tree guard pen. Good luck, koalas. You're on your own, buddies. Here's the cave entrance that we use all the time. Oh, God. And over here is the hound trap. We like to go with every available option on the endless server. <laughs> Tooth traps, houndius, and catapults. I end up mostly just using the houndius. It's a little redundant, but it gets the job done. Okay, up here, we are getting into another build of mine. I wanted to turn one of these peninsulas into a bee zone. So, decorated most of this area. Bee boxes. It's nice to be able to actually integrate a gravestone into uh, into this build. And these mushroom stumps are also part of the Heap of Foods mod. They're pretty nice for decoration, actually. But here's what it takes to make them. Where the heck are they? It's under cooking. Oh yeah, mushroom stumps. And they grow champignons, which you can harvest every few days. Yeah, this is akin to the bee zone that I built on uh, Thrill of the Grill. Kind of wanted to take the same idea and expand it into its own biome. I love doing that for builds in case you haven't noticed. So in case you're wondering about the rifts, we turned on the surface rifts for a moment and then I decided to turn them off because the thing about an endless server is if anyone is playing on the server, that means rifts are going to be spawning, more bright shades are going to be infesting more stuff in the world, and it's just not conducive to a community server at this point, I don't think. We activated it for a little bit, but then we turned it off when I realized they were they're eventually going to overgrow pretty much everything. Like this this base over here used to be a bunch of bright shade catchers, and then it got uh, repurposed after I turned off the rifts. But yeah, it's just one of those things where like I didn't want to log back onto the server just and spend like a good 20 minutes killing a bunch of bright shades every time I wanted to join and build. So we eventually turned it back off. Okay, here is the first of the player built bases. This base belongs to Mina. Let's take a peek. I actually haven't looked at this too much yet. It's quaint. It's compact. It's nice. Chest zone, lots of trees. We we really like the giant trees. Coconut trees are from the Heap of Foods mod. I'm gonna be saying that a lot. But this is very nice. 
Ooh, I like using the, uh, I like how she used the, the pilings for, for walls, like entrances and exits. That's pretty nice. Something I never thought to do. Okay, moving on to Mr. Matt's build. He actually built this in the last week of the server, I believe. What has he been doing over here? Oh my goodness. This is a, this is a rather expansive build. Oh, this is just one area. Yeah, I think he did this in like three or four days. That is a lot of stone walls. All right, what do we got over here? This part I'm, I'm most excited about. Holy God. We do use the Not Enough Turfs mod, which adds a couple extra turfs into the game. By a couple, I mean like dozens and dozens of extra turfs. Oh, these set pieces are really nice. What do we got up here? Oh my goodness. It's brilliant. Ah. Uh, wait, here's, here's an overview of the entire setup. Holy cow, that is a lot of pillars. Okay, I could see why this would have waited until very late in the server. That has a lot of rocks. I do like the use of the muddy turf down here, this is nice. It's cool, it's sporadic, it's wild. It feels like, I mean, it, it feels like more of a natural random thing than I would have generally built. Wow. But yeah, it's beautiful. Not a whole lot of functional builds, but just like, just terraforming to the extreme. Okay, I'm downstairs now. I'm gonna show you Chem's base. Let me grab my umbrella because the rifts are currently active down here. So just in case it starts raining. All right, this is Chem's base. Chem is, Chem typically goes for the cave builds for a number of reasons. The bright shades being the least of those. Well, grass farm. I think this is meant to be used in conjunction with a lure plant. He's got a warning saying, don't pick the grass so it doesn't spawn any geckos. So I think, yeah, it's probably meant for lure plants. Got some banana bushes, some berry bushes. Yeah, I think Kem's, what Kem likes to do is start with a square zone in the middle where he puts all of his, you know, functional stuff like kitchen and chest zone. And then he surrounds it with smaller builds for uh, for different kinds of farms. That was a lot of monkey tails. And a lot of the farms he builds end up producing a lot of resources for com base. This is the spider farm over here. And these are the coffee bushes. Yes, we have coffee in Heap of Foods. Ooh, speaking of foods, it's time to eat. And it seems like a good time to show you my bundle. One nice thing about the Heap of Foods mod is it gives you the op the ability to kind of mix up what food you have on hand based on uh, what ingredients are available. So like my diet has changed a lot during this endless server. Meaty stew is always a staple, but I'm also like if I if I happen to have ingredients to make like a big stack of other food, then I'm gonna go for it. Um, this cucumber salad, also from Heap of Foods mod, it is actually a vegetarian uh, version of Warley's fish cordon bleu, which negates the effects of rain. It makes it completely dry for a short amount of time. And I've not been using an umbrella all that much on this server since I started making cucumber salad. I just, when I get wet, I eat some cucumber salad and that's it. All right, let's head back up. It's time to show you what I've been busy working on these last thousand days. And I say thousand days because you know, on an endless server or a community server, a lot of time's gonna pass when you're not on. So, while you see a day count over 3,000, the amount of days that I've spent on this server is significantly lower. You can see, let me, let me show you. So yeah, I've spent 966 days on this server. So everything you're about to see, I've built during that time. And while it's nighttime, I'm gonna show you the map because it's slightly different from your vanilla DST map. The Heap of Foods mod generates two groups of islands, archipelagos, I guess. One of them is this island, which adds a bunch of biomes from shipwrecked, one from Hamlet, so you can get tea trees on this island. There's a nice little set piece over here with sea stacks that's like perfect for barnacle harvesting. It's really nice. The other island it generates is the Serenity Archipelago, which is where you find most of the new stuff added in the Heap of Foods mod, such as the trees, the sugarwood trees, and the spice bushes, which you'll see I've got lots of those. But this is my base right here. This is what I've been building. And we're gonna head over there right now. Now to get to the island, we go past the portal. We're gonna head up here and we're gonna cross a very long bridge. One thing that 
the heap of foods mod adds to the game that I think we are in desperate need of in the base game is ways to decorate the water around your builds. So this comes with three different plants that you can actually just replant. When you, you harvest them while you sail around, and then you can replant them anywhere to start a brand new plant. So it makes for nice, uh, really nice decoration. Oh, by the way, these two, these two boats in the middle, I was actually not able to build docks right here because this is no longer shallow water, but everything else is shallow, so most of the dock is intact. All right, here is my island. The first island actually spawns a bunch of these chickens. This one's lunch. If you feed the chickens wheat, they lay eggs. So planted some wheat around here. Come on, lay the egg. There you go. It was really fun integrating all these islands together. So like starting with the chicken island, moving over to this other island that spawns crabs. You can catch crabs in a sec. I'll show you how. And you can use them in a couple of recipes, including one really nice sanity dish. And then connecting all these islands with docks, decorating the docks and whatnot. Here is an island I sort of dedic- I, I gave it all to the koalas and more koalas have been <laughs> donated to this island ever since. It is very pink. These are spot spice- or these are spotty shrubs and these are sugarwood trees. And up here is a little keg zone. And these kegs are not cheap. Let me see if I can find them. They're under here. There we go. Wooden keg. They are not cheap. But Kino added a couple of foods into one of the more recent updates of Heba Foods. That is this cola, which you can make in the kegs. I'm just going to grab one. Oh, this is Nuka Cola, which I, I think gives you something like 60 sanity. The great thing about these kegs and these, uh, wooden, these preserves jars is that... They can stay fresh forever inside of the kegs, so you don't need to you don't need to harvest them. They never spoil as long as you don't take them out. Planted some trees up here, but yeah, oh yeah, and beer is another thing you can brew in the kegs, and they give you a very sh uh, a very nice little uh, attack boost. There's another th thing you can cook called pale ale, which gives you a, a stronger attack boost, but it also makes you drowsy for like I think an entire day. So it's kind of a trade-off. Okay, I'm kind of showing some of these things in reverse order, but that might be okay. This is my kitchen. I'll give you an overview. The mod provides a couple of the cooking apparatuses from the gorge, which is pretty cool. It's, fu it's fun cooking in these because what you do is you put some fuel in there. I like to use ruined sap because it's really easy to make. And then you add ingredients into them, kind of like you would with the crock pot. And then you wait, and once they're done, you harvest them. And the nice thing about these cooking stations is they do have a small chance of giving you two of the crockpot dishes instead of just one. I played quite a bit as Warly on this server, and then I switched over to Maxwell when it was time to do more farming. So, like, there's a lot of really nice Warly specific dishes in the heap of foods, but I cook at the regular crockpots for the most part. Up here's a little beach zone. She just made two tents, but the siesta lead too looks nice too. The coconut trees you get from the shipwrecked island. There's a little dock. I do need to be careful around here because we are rather close to Monkey Island. So I do get the occasional pirate raids. Now, down here is an NPC that spawns on this uh on this island. This is the pig elder. And when you first find him, he trades for a couple of the new seeds that you can uh, get, that you can grow in the mod. All the cooking stations. Uh, but once you give him a dish that he likes, it unlocks uh, some of these recipes, which lets you plant and, yeah, produce some more of the mod-specific growable stuff, like these sugar buds grow new trees. It was nice integrating some of the content from Cult of the Lamb crossover into this build. You see, we got the idols, and we've got the new skins for the Potted Ferns. Here's where I have all the vanilla giant crops on display, and where I store the seeds. And down here are all of the modded crops. We've got seven new modded crops. There's, uh, let me see if I can remember. Sea Cucumber, Sweet Potato, uh, fennel, algae, 
uh, parsnips, turnips, and radishes. So I made a separate little build for those. Up here's my gecko pen. I did telelocate a grass gator in thinking that he would, uh, you know, help me produce some twigs. But uh, these geckos glitch out a lot, and I think it's because of the grass gator. I was using a salamander to spook them for a while. Oh, here he is. But after a while, I was just generating so much grass that now the salamander just gets to wander around the island. I've got my cannoneer ready to go, just in case we get a raid. And down here, another pirate dude. I love decorating with these pinch and winches on land. I love the way they look when you just deploy the winch and it just clanks onto the ground. Like, what did you expect? But yeah, there's the gecko pen. Down here is my chest zone. I don't need to store too much stuff here, but yeah, it's nice to have, nice to have extra space for storing and building on the island. But I also, uh, you know, if I if I ever get too much of anything, I'll just drop off any extras over at uh, community base. Here's another dock. One thing that I really uh, I really enjoy doing about uh, with planting these trees is I'll plant the tree first, and then depending on where the f where the figs spawn, I will build docks around them so that I can you know access the figs wherever I need to access them. All right, let's see what else we got. Oh yeah. So, uh, I like to farm glowberries and foliage with the forest stalker. That's how I was able to make all these potted ferns. And it's also where I get the glowberries for making the nuka cola. All right, down here, I did move a couple of tall birds over to the island. I didn't end up using them too much, but they, they are decent for decoration also. I just got to be careful not to leave my beefalo too close to the pens. Because the tall birds, they, uh, they will kill them. Okay. Down here are my wooden kegs. I use them mostly for... So, you, there's actually quite a few things that you can make in wooden kegs. Namely, pickles from vegetables and jam from fruits. So, coconut jam is actually really good for sanity. And cactus preserves are pretty... Uh, sorry, pickle cactus is pretty good for health. And I can just keep these on hand if I'm low on either... Stat, then I can just come here, grab what I need, eat it, and be on my way. Uh, there was one other zone that I wanted to show you. Oh yeah, the middle zone. This is my farm zone. I kind of built most of the most of the other builds around this farm zone, but I wanted to start off with this because, I, as you can see from the from the display, the produce scales, I've been doing quite a bit of farming on this server. But yeah, aside from all the food that it adds, the thing that I appreciate the most about the heap of foods mod is just the expansion of building ideas, being able to integrate these new plants and these new trees into existing builds has been very exciting for me. I really like new trees. I get very excited about new trees. So, and this uh, this mod adds quite a few of them. So I am very happy to build with them. But yeah, this was my, this was my pet project for the last month or so. And I'm pretty proud of what I built. See this island, or this bridge over here leads to the Dragonfly Desert. So dragonflies over there if I want to grab some extra coffee bushes for decoration. I should mention that I was using coffee for a little bit, but it is very unbalancing in multiplayer. Extremely unbalanced. I mean, it's it's 83% speed boost, which in DS in DST is like it, it basically makes most boss fights most boss fights in the game completely like they're they're like free boss fights. But let me just give you an example. If I drink this coffee and I get on this. Speedy beef flow with the Glossmer saddle. Check out the speed. It's like faster than if you turn on, you know, fly mode in Too Many Items Plus. It is like, it is, it completely breaks the game in my opinion. So it was fun using it for a little bit, but as of the last 500 days of building, I just went back to riding around on a beef flow. And that's how I choose to enjoy this experience. But anyways, that's the endless server for this month. I had a lot of fun and big thanks to everyone who helped contribute to the server, everyone who joined, everyone who built, everyone who uh, added stuff around the community base. You are much appreciated. And I gotta say, I've had more fun with this server than I've had on an endless server in a very long time. So I'm really glad that we got a chance to mess around with the mods and uh, yeah, do some building. So thanks again to Kino for these amazing mods. If People are really confused about all this new stuff, and I didn't really, ex you know, explain a lot of it thoroughly. Um, I would consider doing a couple videos just outlining some of the main things 
about the mod. But for now, uh, I'll just let you bask in the in the design. Oh yeah, I, I made a dragonfly shrine. I forgot about that. Well, dragonfly shrine, and uh, this is where I left my beefalo when I was hoofing it on foot. But yeah, again, big thanks for everyone who played on the Endless server this month. And if you want to play on the next Endless server, be sure to hop on the Discord. That's where we share all the info. But that's going to do it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the base tour. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.